So today I'm at Haas F1, and I'm gonna be talking to Greg Syverson. He's the CNC shop manager here. And he's gonna tell us a little bit about how they leverage Mastercam to support the race team. So you guys use Mastercam in here to program a lot of these components. What parts do you make on here? Basically all the metallics that we produce for the car is sent over from the UK and Mastercam. We've had it in the shop since day one. So we've been here a little over eight years now. To see not only where you guys have come, I was involved here at F1 with you guys coming back and forth and helping you establish processes with how you utilize Mastercam or how quickly you can turn around parts and the complexity of parts, but also how the software has matured in those eight years that you've been working in here. Right? Yes, we've benefited from that from the, the beginning stages, mainly the tool pass of what we can utilize on the parts. That's been a big key to our success. You guys do some really unique things with fixturing or, or lack of fixturing, right. how you're able to how you're able to turn over these different components without practically any fixturing at all. Right? Yeah, lack of fixturing is the key. The guys are really, really good about utilizing the master cam to process it, which nine times out of 10, it's in one operation. A typical shop, you know, they might have tight lead times, but often they've got to build a fixture and then you know they've got two weeks into making a fixture. Well, if you spent two weeks making a fixture, you already missed your deadline. Right? Oh, I've missed my deadline by a week yeah, already. Right, yeah, so, so you've got five days to make this thing. So yeah. you've got to start and hit the ground running. You've got to put the block in and, and go. That's true. Can you show me some of these components and let's take a look and then maybe we'll head out to the shop and actually see what you're doing out on the floor. Sounds good. I can't help but notice the this little model in the back. This is your guys' bread and butter, right? Yes, this is. This is basically where the aerodynamics guys, they get all their data off of this, and this is a scaled down 60% model. And everything we do through the year that doesn't go on the full scale car, it goes through the wind tunnel. Real fine work that you yes, got going very, on. Very, very complex parts. About every two weeks we have a new wind tunnel session. They might change this feature by a half a millimeter. So you're able to like pull that part back into Mastercam and use that as like a seed feature to, to yes. create the next one? Actually from the very beginning when we started here, we utilized templates of Mastercam okay. where you might have a similar component and you can pull that in and yep. just use that template. The efficiency the guys have in Mastercam when it comes to that is just unreal. Awesome. Utilizing those Mastercam tool libraries to bring all that right in and, and start programming and be set up for success. So. Yes. And so I assume you start working on this scaled stuff, you're actually making aluminum metal components, CNC machining them, and then when you finally get to that final rev, not long after, you're actually making a mold for the real carbon fiber of that part. That is correct, yeah. Yep. Yeah, because I can see, you know, we look at these components here and there's the there's another design of it sitting on the car. Yeah, because this is 100% carbon fiber yeah. here. So. And you guys actually make a wheel too, right? Yes, the, for the scaled down model. You're gonna have to show me that part because it sounded really yeah. cool. Hey Fred. Hey Jesse, how's it going? Good, good, how you been? Oh, doing all right. So this looks like the wheel that Greg was telling me about. Yeah, so this is our 60% scale model wheel. This thing here has been through multiple operations. It went through two lathe ops and then multiple ops on the UMC. Oh, okay. so. Is that like a morse bolt path I'm seeing down in there? Yeah, so we used a lollipop cutter to get way down in there. and That looks like a fun project. I'm used to seeing you know more parts like this in this shop. And yeah, that, yeah that looks so like this is more one. play work for yeah. us. So we get really excited when we get something like this in. So what are you working on today on the 7 So we have a dual canister mount. It has some really tight H7 bore tolerances. So we're using OptiRough and stock models. Oh. Well, I'd love to check it out. Sure, come on over. That's an awesome part. Those bores must have been pretty challenging. Yeah, so there's a 30 micron tolerance on some of the bores. Got multiple step down bores and everything that we do out here on the first part, we'll check everything through and make sure that it's good to go before Ron receives it in QC. Okay. All he's doing at that point is just double checking the stuff that we okay. confirm. And so you're doing that on the CMM then? Yeah, so we're doing it on the CMM and a Romer arm. Can we go check them out? Yeah, let's go take awesome. a look. So Jesse, this is our inspection department. We use this to check the form on all of our brake duct mold components. So those are pretty tough components to check any other way, right? They are, so that's pretty much minus a couple 3 8 location holes to hold the mold together. There's really nothing you can hard gauge on these, so it is all based off the form of the part. You'll take Verisurf, do like an alignment, get that yeah, set, and yep. then 
probe a few points. Yeah, and then scan the part, and when it's all and said and done, they have a tolerance band that's all color-coded that shows them. Nice. If it's green, it's in spec. Nice. If not... And you're able to do that running right inside a master cam. Yeah, yeah really so cool. it's something we're already familiar with awesome. and makes inspection a breeze. Well, thanks for walking me around today. Yeah. Really, really awesome. Great, great to see you. Great to be back in here again, and we'll catch you next time. Awesome.